G'day guys, Ryan here, Chief Espresso Officer. Today, I'm gonna to start a journey which you guys can follow along. I'm going to see how far I can go with my latte art. I've been a barista for many years in the past. However, I'm no longer working on the machine full time. So I only really make one or two coffees a day and in terms of pouring milk, maybe one coffee a day. So I don't have a lot of experience anymore in pouring milk. I can do your basic latte art, but I want to see how far I can push myself, see what level I can get to. Can I get to a Australian competitor level? I don't know, but I wanna do this as a series of videos through YouTube over the next coming months to see what I can do if I'm like you guys, a home barista, making one or two coffees a day, how much can I improve my milk? Because I don't get the opportunity to pour thousands of coffees a day. So let's get into what we're gonna start with. The first one is where my level of ability and skill is at currently. Let's get into it. So what do you need really to get started? Not much more than just a milk jug and some nice milk. Don't use your macadamia milks and things like that. They really are hardest to stretch, but full cream milk, really easy. Skim milk, super easy. Oat, almond, fairly easy, and soy is decent as well. If you're getting good quality ones, not the ones from the supermarket. Now, cup size is really important. I really find that the lower and the wider the mouth of the cup, much easier to pour any sort of latte art. With these tall ones, you're really limited to doing latte heart and maybe a rosetta if you've got enough practice. But don't start trying to get your favorite mug and then try making latte art on it because it's just not gonna be easy for you at all. This is a professional latte art cup. So this is actually what you'd use if you were competing. It's from Acme and they make them so that they've got a really nice curve, the really nice base, the milk just spills around, you've got a nice open wide uh, mouth to get in there and you can get right to the back to get all of your details in there. When people are doing mega intricate detailed latte art, like your koala bears and your seahorses and your flying pegasus, those sort of things, they require very special types of cups and you wouldn't try to do that in a general mug. Let's see where I'm at. I'm gonna start steaming some milk. Now, if you wanna get more information on how to steam perfectly silky milk, then check out this video here. But also you can see the latte art videos that I've done as well, one on a rosetta and also one on a latte heart. But get your milk set first. Make sure you have nice silky milk. I have been starting to use a secondary pitcher and this one's Jibby Littles, which is one of the top She'd be the top barista latte art champion in Australia. She does a technique where you pour into the other cup. Uh, so you pour it into the other milk pitcher and that just helps get a bit more separation. Now, this is something to notice. I've let my shot dissipate a lot so it doesn't have much crema on top. So I'm not gonna be able to get as much clarity out of it. And I'll show you why. Because when I start to pour, a lot more of the whites come up and it doesn't have that nice contrast. When you're pouring, obviously, you wanna just push the back. This was a terrible one, so apologies for that. That's my Rosetta. Not the greatest. It's hard to talk and, and to do latte art at the same time, especially unpracticed. But you get the idea. So the way to pull it first, push all the milk to the back so it just gives it a nice base. And then slowly, not too fast, bring the, wiggle the jug from left to right as you bring it forward to the front of the cup and then lastly, push it through at the back of the cup whilst pulling it up. So that's a quick overview, but now I can show you what I can do in this particular cup with a fresh shot. Okay, so now you can see there, that shot that's just pulled through, the crema is completely filling the top of the space there, so there's no dissipation at all. Got my super silky milk. You have to have silky milk. If you're trying to do this with bubbly milk, it needs to be cold into the pitcher. Tip it into your other secondary one if you have it. Now, there's two different ways. You can pour it down the side and that just brings up a lot. I love that because it gives you lots of variations and then you can finish it off. I don't have enough milk for that particular one. But you can see how hard it is to get in there to tight. It's such a tight little space there to work with. It really makes a difference to your latte art, so just don't bother with those ones if you're practicing your latte art. Now I'm gonna give it a go, see what I can do. I haven't done a swan in a very long time, so I'm not sure if I can even make it properly, but we'll give it a go. Reminds me of this story that I actually had a few years ago 
when I went to uh, a latte art masterclass. And it was just a generic one. They, we were just there to see the State Barista Championship at the time. And they were just giving a class on that. And they got a few volunteers up to, to come and try having their go at whatever latte art they could do. Now, I've been pulling some swans, so I wasn't um, inexperienced. I knew what I could do. What I didn't realize was how much the nerves would kick in when you're standing up there in front of all these other baristas that are quite well versed in uh, latte art. But I got the shakes a bit and they did the milk for me. So I knew the milk was right and they did the shot for me. All I had to do was pour the latte art. And here's some footage of that exact thing because I felt like I had to capture this most embarrassing moment I ever had on film. But the guy actually asked me after I poured the worst swan that I'd ever poured in my entire life, he actually asked me, have I ever poured before? <laughs> I just was so embarrassed because of course I'd poured before, it just nothing went the way that I wanted to in that moment. And I only got one shot at it, I had to sit down again with my tail between my legs. Still, this time I'm going to try and get the best latte artist to train me to see if I can, making one or two coffees a day, even come close to some of the latte art designs they do. So enjoy this footage while we quickly steam this milk. Yeah, two beers think. and a banana. Two beers and a banana. <laughs> you should serve that up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I just uh, muck, muck it up when I went in there. Yeah. 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 Have you ever caught a swap? Uh, yeah, but very like more look. They look like a mosquito. A mosquito. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. Like, cool. But, now, so this is a double ristretto. So often in the competitions, they'll do a double ristretto as opposed to one single or one full double. Obviously, there's not a lot of room in here, so you do have to uh, be careful not to fill it all up with just coffee, so you have no room to pour. Get the base out there. Get my wings. Come in, do my neck. Oh, not good. Oh, and the camera got in the way. So that's good. Bloody National Geographic, get in there everywhere. Yeah, so you can see I'm a long way from where I was and you can see some of my other old phoenixes and swans. So I'm definitely rusty, but that's good because there's hopefully only one way to go, which is up. There you go. I've done some of the designs that I'm very rusty on still. However, you know, it's very easy to get started at home. I think the main tips that you need to have is cold, cold milk, get a really nice crema, perfect the silkiness of your milk. Without that, you just cannot hope to get a good result. And then just start practicing every time you pour, just see if you can get a little bit of a shape to come out. If you can get that billowing out of the milk, then that's your, you're on your way to getting the latte heart. And then once you've mastered the heart, you go on to the fern leaf or the rosetta, and then you can start to really apply some of the advanced techniques. But join me next week because I'm going to visit the latte art competitions, the regional competitions here, and we're gonna to talk to some of the competitors and see if they have any tips to help me making one or two coffees at home, how I can keep improving and what I need to learn and any other tools that I might need, and we'll go on this journey together. So stay tuned, I'm Ryde, your Chief Espresso Officer, and as always, enjoy your brew.